Since we've released the TrueFlow, we've been helping technicians solve comfort complaints in homes on existing equipment, whether that stems from the filter, whether it comes from the coil being too dirty, the blower being too dirty, or the existing ductwork's just too small, and that's been awesome. But now, we're gonna take it up a notch. We're gonna look at one of the biggest problems we've got going on in the industry, and that is system replacements. On this home, we've got an existing system. Today, we want to look at replacing that system. And what we really wanna know is, are all of those components, the filter, the duct system, is it going to work with our new piece of equipment? We call that forecasting. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use it. The first thing I like to do when I'm getting started is to go collect all my data. So I'm gonna go outside and I'm gonna to go to the outdoor unit first and I'm gonna look at that data plate tag and I'm gonna pull the tonnage from the model number. Then I'm gonna come back inside and as I'm walking to the attic, because I know the system's in my attic space, I'm gonna glance and I'm gonna see that the filter grill is right there in the ceiling. So I know I'm dealing with a filter grill. That's important. We're gonna get back to that in a minute. I'm gonna go up the attic stairwell and I'm gonna see a furnace with an evaporator coil. Okay, so I know what I'm working with, okay? I've ran a load calculation on this house because I'm gonna do a system replacement. Now, I'm gonna pull up my tablet and I'm gonna show you to the left of the screen me kind of walking through this test. There's a few changes from the original TrueFlow workflow and I'm gonna cover them as we go. This will go kind of quick. If you've never ran a TrueFlow test before, go watch this video and then come right back here. This is the beginning, this is where it starts. This is the training video that gets you comfortable to use this tool for your first time. This video is a little bit more advanced. Okay, let's get started. We're gonna do a system airflow and static pressure workflow. Okay, we're gonna do cooling. We're gonna, we have a furnace up there. We have a horizontal furnace, air filter location, filter grill, we seen that earlier. Now look at our drop down. Look what just appeared. Separate filter and return. Required to view forecasted results. If you wanna use forecasting, you gotta to toggle that on. What that's asking is you to take another pressure measurement immediately right after the filter. I'm gonna show you that on the next screen, okay? Here's a tip. If you know you're always gonna do forecasting or you always wanna separate the filter grill from the return duct work, go to the settings and turn that toggle on under workflow settings. If you do that, then when you are in your test, you will not need to even have that toggle anymore. We make it disappear and it's always on. So that's just a quick tech tip if you wanna use it. Okay, design performance, three ton, that's what we have. Max TESP on the systems, a 0.8. Return air temperature is 70 degrees. And we're just gonna leave this at 400 SCFM per ton for testing in. Okay, get through our test instructions. We don't have any of those that we have to worry about. And we can start pressure mapping. So here's where that picture changes for forecasting. Notice on the screen, we've got an additional pressure measurement right after the filter, okay? That's new. We're gonna take that measurement. Okay, once we take that measurement, we're gonna go back to business as usual, right? We're gonna do the return duct work. That's the measurement right behind the furnace or right into the furnace. If you wanna use that electrical outlet and get in there, that's good. If you're taking it in the duct work right before the furnace, make sure there's not a piece of metal that's blanking off half of that furnace. Okay, now the next one is before the evaporator coil. I'm going to take that measurement. Now I like to go uh, one inch behind the end of the furnace. As you see in the picture, that's my favorite spot to go. You do you. Okay, the supply plenum, we're going to go in there, take that measurement. Okay. Once we're done with all these measurements, we can then click continue. Now, we're gonna take that filter out of this um, ceiling return grill and we're gonna put the true flow up there. Okay, once we do that, we're gonna take that measurement. Okay, we're done. Let's put everything back to normal and let's save this test. Okay, 
Now, we're looking at this test and let's see what we got here. 325 SCFM per ton. So airflow is running a little on the low side. Um, we're, we're in the yellow. And our total external static pressure is about 0.545. So, eh, you know, some of us might let that ride. Let this house really dehumidify. Okay. Now, you look at the details. It says low flow, pressure is okay. So when it's in that yellow, you've got a decision to make as a technician, right? You know the equipment better than we do, right? You know it down to the performance data. If you want to let it live at 325 and you know you can make that system dehumidify better and not freeze up, be my guest, let it rip. That's what yellow lets us know. Now you get into the red, you've got different decisions to make. That's where you probably should bump up that flow. Okay, so yellow is a cautionary tale. Okay. Let's just jump into forecasting. How do you get to it? That's where that button comes into play. That's brand new. Let's click that. We've got forecasting details. I'm going to go over these because they're pretty important. True flow forecast provides predicted performance for new equipment or settings within existing duct systems. Okay. True flow app does not provide a load calculation to determine required equipment capacity. I'm going to repeat that. TrueFlow does not provide a load calculation. You have to do that outside of us, right? You have to go model the home and get a heat load. Do a manual S, do a manual D if you need to, right? That's a different, that's a different animal than what we're doing here. We're trying to make sure what piece of equipment that's delivered from that is gonna work. Okay, the default max total external static pressure is 0.7 by default. You may adjust this value in the settings menu. This is a button we added quite some time ago. In the settings menu, you'll see the toggle that says use max TESP. If you toggle that on, you'll always get to use the TESP that you enter, even for forecasting, okay? If you do not have it toggled on, we're gonna default at 0.7. Okay, continue. Now, here's the two options we have for forecasting. Change airflow target on the existing equipment. So I told you we'd replace the system, and we are. We're gonna get into that in just a second. But I wanna show you a pretty nice feature that came with forecasting. Change airflow target. Okay, on the screen you'll see that we have an airflow dial and a total external static pressure dial and a slider. Now, what you see with those gray pips, those triangles are the benchmark of the existing system. That's our test in data. If you want to see what it looks like without having to change the fan speed and retest, that's what the slider's for. Just adjust the slider, and you'll see that those blue indicator dials, those are starting to move. They're blue because they're active. That's what we mean by them being blue, active dials. So we can move that around, and we could put it both in the green if we want to, um, and get that one in the airflow out of the yellow. And then we could click see results. We can see all the sub pressures from that generate a report if we want to. Okay. But we didn't come here to do that. We came here to put a new piece of equipment here. And that's what we're going to do. Forecast cooling performance of new equipment. Now, just to let you know, if you were to came in from a heating test, you would have a button that says forecast heating performance of new equipment. So if you come into this as a cooling test, you're going to go into forecasting as a cooling test. If you come in as a heating test, you're going to go into forecasting as a heating test. Okay. So if you are someone who does not recognize your highest design flow, you may want to run two tests. You may want to run a cooling forecasting on the house and you may want to run a heating forecasting on the house. If it's close, make sure they both work out. Okay. Now the next question we're being asked is the indoor coil location. Okay, now let's say we want to pull out that furnace and box coil and we want to put back a cold climate heat pump with the coil being internal with the blower. That's what's represented by picture number one. Let's say we have an oddball piece of equipment. Haven't seen many of these in my life, maybe you have. Let's say you've got an electric furnace with a box coil downstream. If you got that, that's picture number two. Let's say we've got a gas furnace and a downstream coil. That's what we have here. Let's say we want to replace the system with that. We're going to click that button 
The next page is our max TESP. I told you where that was, so we're gonna enter that information. Let's put 0.8, continue. Okay, this is our simulator screen. This is where forecasting gets fun. Okay, it says make selections below. So we have to design something before, you give, before we give you advice. So what we're asking you to do is make some selections. So let's put the cooling capacity back to what the load calculation told us it was gonna be, which is three tons. Now we can move our expected filter grill pressure drop just somewhere, expected indoor cold pressure drop somewhere. Now you'll notice the whole screen lit up. We got a whole bunch of data, okay? Our dials lit up, our blue dials are active. We can have some fun with those. Now you'll notice the two gray triangles under the pressure drop categories. That is your existing pressure drop of the coil and the filter grill at that system capacity, okay? So if you take that slider and you line it up, that second slider, and you put it as close as you can to that gray triangle and the same thing with the coil, that's you telling me I'm gonna leave those alone and I'm not gonna replace them, okay? But how's that gonna work? Let's find out. We put in a three ton system, we've got 400 SCFM per ton, and we can see that our TESP is 0.76. If you wanna let it live, let's see what the sub dials look like. See results at the bottom, go to the next screen, and those two dials carry, but now what you get is the sub dials for the rest of the system. So you can see the only issue we have right now is the filter pressure drop is a little high, okay? Click details. Flow is okay, high filter pressure drop. Oh, I missed one, I'm sorry. The details reminded me that I actually also have flow is okay, I have high supply, high supply pressure. Okay, so I've actually got two issues. Now, let's have some fun. Let's go back one button and let's lower that filter pressure drop to, I don't know, 0.1. Let's just say we put in a really awesome filter on this job and replace system that's gonna operate nearly the same. Let's see what the results look like. Okay, now we've got our airflow at 400 still, right? That's our target, that's not gonna move. Our TESP is 0.617, so that dropped. And now we have dropped the filter pressure drop out of the yellow, so it's no longer an issue. So we click our details and we have flow is okay, high supply side pressure. So I su our supply is 0.243, it's in the yellow. What did we talk about with yellow previously? It's a cautionary tale, okay? So that's a decision you gotta make. You could make some duck improvements on the system, get that in the green if you want to, you may want to let it live. That's a decision you need to make. Is the TESP below 0.8, which was the highest on the fan curve chart? Yes, it is. It's at 0.67. This is where you as a technician have to make a, de a decision or have a conversation with the homeowner. If the fan curve chart is maxing out at 0.8, that's your tolerance of what you get to work with, this is where you really got to go look at your manual S. How much airflow do you need to deliver in this home from the expanded performance data at that flow and can you get it at 0.6 static? If you can, you can let the supply live. If you can't, maybe that's the first place you go make improvements on, okay? Now, once you do that, you can then click report. Now you get to see a report of this system, okay? give that to the homeowner, send it back to the office. Do what you do inside of your business with that. Okay, that's forecasting and I hope you like it. Mm.